Hi there, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming Life. Coming up on our Wyoming Life, the morning routine. You wake up and you're already at work. Then a tractor is down and needs repaired before any feeding can take place and hungry animals are waiting. Later, the Model T makes its first appearance of the year and still runs like a dream. Every morning starts out almost exactly the same here on the ranch. Aaron and I get up early, we get a cup of coffee, and we start planning out our day. I would have taken a video in that part, but Erin said no way until she had a shower and got her hair done. So instead, here's a shot of the coffee cup that the girls got for me for Father's Day. Once we get the details of our day hammered out, it's time to go to work. Certain things need done every morning on the ranch. Most of them have to do with animals, and some of them are totally dependent on me. Others you just need to keep an eye on and make sure that all is okay. First on the list of morning chores is checking the cows. They're still calving. We have over 100 calves on the ground now, but there are still the stragglers, and we still average one or two new calves per day. The morning check consists of driving through the entire herd, making sure all the calves and cows look okay, none of them are sick or acting goofy. You'd be surprised how quickly you can pick out a cow or a calf from a long ways away that's not acting quite right. This morning, all looks okay. No new calves yet today, although we will be back out in a few hours to check again. Now, back to the shop for more chores. Next up, we have the orphan calves. They are starting to eat some solid foods already, but they still get milk in the morning and at night. This morning, they get two bottles each. We still have Cupcake and Lincoln's as of yet unnamed calf, although they have been moved out of the barn and into an outside corral. I found these bottle holders, they attach to the fence, and work great. The breakfast of champions. Now, on to the chickens. First, open up the chicken door. Let the chickens out into the world. Our chickens are free range. They go wherever they want to go, and they scatter quickly. Inside the chicken house, we gather eggs from each roost. Sometimes moving chickens to do so, and some that won't move, we just reach on underneath. Eggs are placed in a basket and go back to the shop in the fridge until we get a chance to wash them. While we're back at the shop and in a chicken mood, we better get the baby chicks some food and water. They aren't so much babies anymore. They're now three weeks old and have gotten their feathers and are almost ready to go into the chicken house themselves, although it still will be five months until they lay a single egg. Still, we get them the food and refill their little tiny waterers. Chicken water stinks. A combination of the heat and the fact that chickens backwash something terrible makes this one of the worst parts of my day. Luckily, that kind of wraps up my morning chores. I still have to check water and make sure the bulls and steers are fed, but that comes later. First, a problem has arisen that needs some attention. So there's a saying on the ranch. Actually, there's not. I just made this up, but it fits. If it has a wheel or an engine, it's going to need fixed sooner or later. It's going to break. And usually it breaks when you need it. We were going to go feed the bulls and steers a bale of hay that weigh up to 1,500 pounds. Not something you can throw over your shoulder. You need a tractor, and a tractor with a flat tire is no good. So, we fix it. This tractor weighs almost 10,000 pounds, and the tire alone comes in about 400 pounds, so it's not something we can just take off and roll to town to get fixed. Tractor tires get fixed on the spot, and they don't even come off the tractor. The liquid you see on the ground and the tire is actually called beet juice, Made from beets, it's pumped into the tire to add weight to counterbalance the load that you carry on the front of the tractor. Each gallon of beet juice weighs about 10 pounds, and with 100 gallons of it in the tire, it adds a ton of weight. 
to the back of the tractor. The only problem is that when your tire springs a leak, it makes a sticky, smelly mess. So the first thing we do is pump the rest of the beet juice that hasn't leaked out of the hole out of the tire and into a storage tank where we can put it back into the tire once it's fixed. Using a 20-ton air jack, we lift the tractor into the air and start using bars or tire irons to loosen the tire on the rim. Once we have a little gap made, we can use this air-powered bead breaker to pop off the rest of the tire. Then it's just a matter of peeling the tire over the rim to get to the tube. The old tube comes out, which we'll save because we might be able to patch it. Then a new tube goes in. The tire is muscled into place with the help of a little lube. The beet juice pumped back in and a little air added and we're back in business. A couple hours of downtime, a $30 tube, and life continues and the steers get fed. And we move on to our next project. History is a big thing here on the ranch. This ranch was established in the early 1900s and has been an operating ranch since then. The ways have changed, the methods of ranching and even the types of the ranch, from a bull operation to a feedlot to a cow-calf operation. But some things always stay the same. The rules of the ranch. Saddle your own horse. Be kind to the animals. Have courage. Always finish what you started. Take pride in your work. Be tough, but fair. Know where to draw the line. Treat women like ladies. Respect the brand. No spitting indoors. And most of all, love what you do. One more rule that should be added on there. Have fun. This is a 1924 Model T one-ton pickup truck purchased for just over $800 in 1925 from our original local car dealer, Gillette Motor Company. These are the original manuals that came with it, and here's a picture of my father-in-law riding in it in a local parade. I found it a few years ago, tucked away in a barn, not running, just like it had been parked many years before. One winter... I decided to get it running. Not for any reason. It's not useful around the ranch, but it is a piece of history that deserved to at least have some of its dignity back and be able to do what it was meant to do, even back then, get from point A to point B. Each and every year, after a long winter of storage, I bring it out of the barn and park it where you can see it, where you can be reminded that ranches mean history and hard work, and at the time, this was the epitome of technology and engineering. Now is the time to get the old girl out and into the sun again. Henry Ford said you could get a Model T in any color you wanted, as long as it was black. And even though color choice wasn't an option, this Model T was the top of the line in 1924 and had electric start. There's a button on the floorboard that you push with your foot to start her up. But starting is the easy part. Driving is a whole different matter. Before we can even get that far, we have to get the tires aired up and get her off the jack stands. The tires are original and expensive to replace, so I store it jacked up to keep the weight off the tires and limit the wear on them. On the ground and ready to go, we can take a look at the powerhouse of this truck, a 20 horsepower inline four-cylinder engine. Nothing compared to today, and the interior lacks cup holders or even a seat belt, and driving it requires that you forget all you know about driving a modern car or truck. Three pedals on the floor. The right pedal is the brake pedal. The left pedal is what puts the truck in gear. If you push the pedal all the way to the floor, you're in low gear. If you let it all the way out, then you're in high gear and can reach up to 45 miles per hour. The middle pedal and get this, is the pedal that makes you go in reverse. Press it to the floor, and you're going backwards. The lever on your left side is your clutch, and with it, you can put the car in neutral. The lever on the right side is a high-low gear selector, so basically, you have four gears in this pickup. On the column, no such thing as turn signals back then, but you do have a spark advance on the left, and a throttle on the right, which both have to be used in tandem to control your engine speed. 
On the dash, we have a key to turn it on and off, an amp meter to measure the flow of the battery, and a choke knob to restrict airflow to the carburetor and help with starting the engine. Legroom is minimal, and I can only imagine that people in 1924 must have been smaller. I'm 5'10", and for me to get in and out of this thing takes a little bit of a squeeze, and legroom is even more limited. No such thing as comfort. This was a working man's truck, and if you didn't like the accommodations, you could get out and walk. She's been waiting all winter for this, so let's get her out. She still starts like a dream and runs like an out-of-tune lawnmower, but luckily she only has one job to do, and that's to look pretty. So away we go. It's a trick to drive, and that's an understatement, but it is fun, and if you're ever around and want to take her for a spin, you're more than welcome. I don't know too many people around these days that can say they've driven a Model T, but it's a fun group of people to be in a class with. Speaking of how far we've came, we're now heading into our fifth month of our Wyoming life, and I want to thank all of you for coming along for the ride. I hope you continue along with us as spring and summer get into full swing. We're going to be wrapping up calving soon, and branding is just around the corner. And haying will start, and that'll keep us really busy. Erin will be getting busy soon as well. I hope you can check out her videos and learn more about local food production and farmer's markets. She's got some great cooking videos planned and a whole lot more. Please subscribe, like, and comment. Ask us anything, and we'll do our best to give you an honest answer. We're also in the process of trying to upgrade some of our equipment in order to bring you better videos. As you know, we don't have a camera crew out here following us around, so filming with phones gets a little tricky. If you'd like to support our channel, we have set up a Patreon account where you can back us and get some cool perks and merchandise out of the deal, like stickers and t-shirts. I'll put the link in the description. You can do with it what you please. Trust me, whether you support us or not, we're still going to continue to bring you the best of us and the best of our ranch. If you do choose to back us, I owe you more than you will ever know. And both Aaron and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts. That's it for this week. I hope you have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.